Nerd Soul. Why you a black man in love? <laughs> All right, welcome back everyone to another episode of Black Together, A Walk in Her Shoes. I am Lady Lisa and I'm here with my sister cousin, partner in crime, Madam Butterfly. Say hello. Peace, love, and light, everybody. All right, so today we are talking about shenanigans. Um, (laughs) The title of our show today is Let's Make a Deal. High value men dating down and other relationship gains. So, what is in our shoebox for such an occasion, Madam Butterfly? <laughs> I'm so glad you asked. Today, we have a pair of red bottom DIY handmade vinyl shoe stickers mm. because we are talking about the reindeer games Black <laughs> women play in dating and the new obsession with finding a high value man. Hmm. <laughs> so, I cannot wait for the comments. Y'all yes. really gonna love this, or y'all just gonna be big mad, right? Either and way. I want to, I want to point out, uh-huh. it was not an actual shoe in the shoe box. It was stickers, <laughs> red bottom stickers to put on the bottom of shoes. But it was a Louis Vuitton shoe box, though. <laughs> All right. So what are we talking about and why? All right, look, some of you may or may not have heard of Kevin Samuels um, or seen some of his videos. You may or may not have seen other videos by other people that have been just seem to be becoming more and more popular where there are women in general, um, but of course, as always, we're focusing on black women that um, are have this unrealistic expectation of finding what Kevin Samuels has coined as a high value man, which is a man who's making, you know, $250,000 and and upward who has, you know, this, this high level job and is living this extravagant lifestyle. And it seems that, you know, even though these men are in a very small percentage in all of the United States, let alone amongst black people, that every woman thinks she gonna get her one. Right. <laughs> now, you know, you, you don't have to be good at math to understand that those <laughs> numbers don't add up. Right. But at any rate, so <laughs> we, we've become disturbed, you know, by, by some of black women's ideas of, uh, about and attitudes towards black men, you know, mm-hmm. towards relationships and marriage and, and all of this seems to be a detriment um, to our detriment and leading to our either inability or unwillingness to get married because we can't seem to find this high value man. Right. So I want to, I want to throw some statistics out here for us to, to really think on. According to an article posted on census.gov, the median age at which black women married spiked from around 20 years old to 30 years old between 1950 and 2010. Okay. Mm -hmm. The percentage of black women 35 and over who never get married or have had never married spiked from 9% in 1980, all the way up to a little over 25% by 2010. Mm. That's, I mean, Mm. so, so the question is what has changed so drastically? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we're, we're going to talk about some some of those things that seem to have changed so so drastically. What what do you yes. think about these statistics? First of all, Madam Butterfly, what do, what do you think about that? Um. Well, I I'm not surprised. Mm. Um. I really thought that it would be higher than that, actually, mm. um, because you know we're not faring well as black women, we're not, we're not faring well, um, in the dark, in the, in the dating market. Mm -hmm. Um, now as far as careers and, you know, higher incomes and those types of things, Mm -hmm. um, it seems that we have, uh, kind of traded in, uh, the, 
you know, two parent home, that family life for Mm -hmm. the corporate life. Yeah. You know, and um, I I really think that that's to our detriment. Mm -hmm. Um, And it has um, kind of not kind of, but but we've taken on more masculine attributes Mm -hmm. and and sacrificed our femininity. You know, and, mm-hmm. and, and that's part of the allure in the male-female dynamic, you know. Um, so uh, those type, the type of women that are like the aggressive corporate type women mm-hmm. uh, tend to want alpha men. Mm. And an <laughs> alpha male is not going to respond well to a masculine woman. Mm. So they end up, the women end up with beta men that they chew up and spit out um, because that's the only man that's willing to deal with them. Mm. So (laughs) I don't mean to, I don't mean to, to, to be so general, but um, Mm. you know, our attitudes as black women generally speaking, has really turned to trash. And um, we used to be the mothers, caretakers, overseers of the community, mm-hmm. you know, um, and that wasn't that long ago, you know, a- as, as children in our generation, it wasn't, you know, uncommon to see the big mamas Mm -hmm. Um, of the neighborhood, you know, if there were kids that were hungry, you know, you knew you could go to big mama's house and have a meal, you know, um, there was um, kind of a community disciplinary type situation where Mm -hmm. everybody is kind of guiding the children. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, it's a collective effort. And now it's just, it's just a, a hot mess that is, you know, Black women encouraging poor behavior by other Black women, lack of accountability, Mm -hmm. uh, unwillingness to compromise um, or to be soft, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, anything that is remotely, you know, similar to femininity, it seems that Black women are posturing themselves in opposition to that. And... um, Mm -hmm you know, those, those marriage numbers, those statistics are only going to go up if we don't get it together and, you know, understand the, understand our positioning in the male female dynamic, you know, and, and in saying that, I know that's going to ruffle some people's feathers because when you talk about a woman's place and a man's place or roles and things like that, the, you know, so-called feminist women look at that as a demeaning thing. And it's not, you know, to, to operate within the, um, to operate within our power, to operate within our gifts, to operate within our natural abilities Mm -hmm. is, is, is a sign of power. It's not a sign of weakness. Um, Uh, And I agree. Cause the first thing I thought of when you said that is if you think about, you know, any sort of sports team, you know, if you think of a, a basketball team or a football team on a football team, you know, everybody wants to be the quarterback, but the quarterback has no power if nobody's playing any of the other positions. Right. You know, so it's not, it's not demeaning to be in another position. You know, you put it upon yourself if if you say, oh, it's a lower position. Well, it depends if that's the way you want to look at it, but it's not. But it's not, you know, and I agree, you know, I think we've gotten to a place where it's like no one wants to have what they call traditional gender roles. Mm -hmm. Well, how is that working for us? (laughs) How's that working? You know, it's not. Yeah. And we've gotten stuck in. You can have it all. No, you can't. Right. You cannot have it all. Right. And stop listening to what they are saying about white women and what white women are saying. What what works or does not work. You know, anything that they're saying works for women, that's for white women. When people right. make generalizations about, about women and what women can do and all this stuff in society, they're talking about white women. Right. Or, or women who are able to live as white women, right. a.k.a. white Latinas. Right. 
that, and that, I, they, that's they're true. not talking about us. That's true. Well, and not only that, I think that, um, you know, there is a cultural component when it comes to um, being cooperative mm -hmm. with with your mate and other other races. Somebody's been you know, not. Huh? Somebody's been watching Kevin Samuel. Oh, for sure. For <laughs> sure. I love Kevin Samuels. I love Kevin Samuels. And I, and I must say that watching Kevin Samuels has made me a better wife, has mm. made me a better partner to my husband. Um, and, you know, that's a that's a, for another show. But, um, you know, everything everything in our culture tells us as Black women that we need to be aggressive, have an attitude, um, create conflict, um, you know, just the opposite of what other women, other races of women do. And mm -hmm. so how can we expect to have the same result as, as other women when they're behaving differently with their men, they're interacting differently with their men. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And oh, um, yeah. And so I wanted to go back to, to what I just said about have, having it all, because that's, to me, that that's really what all of this kind of is about, is the belief that we can have it all. Meaning we can have the attitude, right? Mm -hmm. We can have mm -hmm. the I'm in charge, kind of attitude we can have this high powered high paying demanding job mm -hmm. and have a a quote high value man who also has a high power demanding um you know 50 hour 50 60 hour a week job we, we can have you can't have all of that man now and a gen gender neutral home where there you know there there are no gender roles no uh real deal cut and dry responsibilities for the for the woman yeah uh, I mean it's yeah. just let, let me say this you can have it all but something or some things are going to be a hot mess mm -hmm. it's going to be a hot mess you can't sure. you can't um give it your all no not to say oh my god if you're if you're working there's no way you I'm not saying if you're working women work every day all the time and are able to keep a happy home and a happy marriage. But yeah, you know, when you are trying to have this, this demanding career be, you know, this, this um, very involved business owner and just have this aggressive attitude and it's all about you. It's just not going to work. It's just, it's just not going to work. And I think that's where we are or where black women are on top of, they have these very unrealistic ideas of what type of man they need and, and want for a husband. Mm -hmm. Like these six figures and stuff. I'm like, what are y'all talking? And I live in LA and I'm like, what? I don't understand where you're going to find these men. I mean, <laughs> how, I mean how are they going to find you? You don't even run in these circles. Right. Like you, you don't know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody who know him. Right. <laughs> I'm trying to understand what bippity boppity boo you think is going to happen. <laughs> I'm confused. <laughs> I feel like you can't put a sentence together. You, uh, call, you know, you can't express a thought without saying like 15 times. What, what do you have to bring to the table, ma'am, except your chest? <laughs> yeah the the lack of self-awareness is just unreal uh i was watching a video um before we you know started recording today and um there was a a woman who was saying that you know the whole the whole concept uh you know, what they were taught or the context of the show was that men and women think differently. Mm -hmm. That was the whole context. Mm -hmm. And so she was just like, well, you know, I'm going to find a man who thinks like me. Um, and if, and, and if I can't find a man who thinks like me, then I'll just go to the sperm bank and have a baby and, and raise my baby and be by myself. I saw that. 
Did you? I did. <laughs> and I'm just like, are you hearing yourself? <laughs> are you hearing yourself? And and the crazy thing is one of the people on the panel, one of the women on the panel uh, was like a psych major. Yes. And so then the question becomes, okay, so statistically, do children fare better in a two-parent home or a one-parent home? She was like, well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> So basically, the way that you're conducting yourself is like a spoiled brat. What you're mm-hmm. saying is that somebody should ex- accept you full on for who you are, but you're not willing to accept them for who they are. They have to fit into your mold. Mm-hmm. And if they're not willing to fit into your mold, well, then you're going to just take your toys out of the sandbox and mm-hmm. go home and have you a test and have you a go to the sperm bank mm-hmm. and have you a baby. And live, I don't know what, ha- live happily ever. No, you, won't, Is you, that a- you want to marry you with a penis. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. That, mean, and, and that's just ridiculous. Yeah. yeah, I saw that and I was just like, these women are so young minded. I know most of them were young. But they were not so, that young, though. They were no. They you right. They were twenty seven ish, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, yeah. somewhere yeah. in there. Yeah, yeah. They but they were very young minded. Yes, very young minded. And you know, it was still the whole for a lot of them. You can't even really express yourself. You know what I mean? It, you can't really speak, and it's painful to listen to you ramble in fifteen million likes in a you know. 10 word sentence. Uh, it's so <laughs> oh, I'm, yeah. I don't know how we got here. Yeah. I don't know how we got here. I, I mean, I, part of me wants to believe that it's because black women jumped on the feminist train mm-hmm. thinking that we were welcomed passengers mm-hmm. and we were not. Right. We, we were not the, this the, 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 I'm sorry that movement was not and is not for us because as it's you not. can see these feminists are not jumping up when when black women are being assaulted and killed right right because we're still women so if you're right. a feminist and you're for all women then that means all women who are feminists should be jumping up in defense of any woman right who is having a hard time or or being um, you know, mistreated, assaulted, or whatever. That has not happened. Right. Karen has and it will not to, to show up. Right. And it won't for, for Tamika now. Right. And it won't. It won't it happen. Won't. It won't right. happen. So all right. All right. So let's talk about this. What what is what is the concept of the high value man? Okay. So, you know, according to Kevin Samuels. Mm-hmm. Uh, Because, you know, I'm a big fan. Uh, A high value man makes $10,000 per month or more for five for at least five years or more. He's he has group acceptance by other high value men. He is in a network or he has the ability to network with other high value men. He has position and income visibility, which means that someone would be able to readily identify that he is in a position of power and wealth and he is useful to others in the high value community. Okay. Yeah. Now, so, go, ahead. go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Now with, with that definition, I would say these women aren't really looking for high value men in this definition because right, right. They're just looking for men with the money. Right. And a, a man with the money is not necessarily a high value man by this definition, by any means. Right. Um, you know, but so they're looking for a high value bank account attached to a man. Right. Without, without any regard to who and what this man is. Because when I listen to these women and all of these different videos that I've seen, Mm -hmm. when someone asks them what they're looking for in a man, they describe his bank account. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. I didn't ask you what bank account you're looking for. I asked mm -hmm. you what man you're looking for. They never say he has to be intelligent. He has right. to be educated. He has to be uh, um, a good friend. Mm -hmm. He has to be kind. And, but they don't never say none of those things. This is what he needs to make. This is what he needs to do. This is what he needs to buy me. Right. Well, can he be a serial killer? Do you care about that? <laughs> what you I mean? What if he got a couple bodies on him? I mean, <laughs> it, it, it blows my mind because you never speak. They never speak on what type of person he needs to be. Right. I, right. I'm, you know, I'm blown. I, I get, I, I'm blown by it. So, well, but this. This is why we end up in these situations as Black women where we're saying, you know, all men are dogs and I don't need a man and all of this stuff because the, the method of, in which you choose a man is all jacked up. And so then you want to get mad at, you want to get mad at the man that you chose, but the standards by which you were choosing were all jacked up. Yep. So what do you expect? If your quality control filter is off, hmm. then your quality is going to be a hot mess. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I just, I don't know. I, I'm. How did we get here? <laughs> How did, how did we get here? And how do we get a ticket to get off of the cuckoo train? <laughs> you know, I mean, I think it's like, it was like a progression because the, the messaging, you know, in the, in the seventies with the whole welfare thing, and we've talked about this before, mm -hmm. you know, the, the messaging that kind of um, nullified the importance of black men in the home through the welfare system. You know, and then we started to get um, or have access to different grants and um, loan options for higher education. Mm -hmm. So now we're, you know, so now we're making more, you know, mm -hmm. and we have this attitude of, well, I don't need a man. He's broke. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm better than you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because because his position has already been nullified, right? So mm -hmm. if his position is nullified, that puts you in, in a place of self-importance. Mm -hmm. And then when you start doing well in, you know, education, career, that type of thing, because that is the standard for America. Right. You know what I mean? America is about position, titles, power, that that's, that's mm -hmm. how we operate. Right. So you start getting these things and you, you start equating yourself with the with your white counterpart, mm -hmm. right? So now you're in a position of, of judgment and authority over the black man. So mm -hmm. now in order for him to be quote unquote on your level or for you mm -hmm. not to be dating down, mm -hmm. he has to meet all of these career and income qualifications mm -hmm. without any consideration whatsoever to his morality. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. And this is something me, me and Nurse so were, were talking about where it's like a lot of these women don't consider, or maybe they do consider, but I think a lot of them don't consider the fact that, you know, you can have men and there are men who have uh, jobs and own companies as a plumber, as electricians, as, uh, you know, construction workers who make very good money mm -hmm. these these men that own their own companies again as as you know plumbers and electricians they make very good money mm -hmm. you know michael said he was uh, nurse said he was doing some research and he found that um elevator i was it ele people um people who repair elevators make like over like 150,000 a year oh wow uh, and uh, yeah who would have known because it's like you know what are you going to do? Go, go find another person who repairs elevators. Like they're not just, <laughs> you know, so, I mean, just like with plumbers, plumbers can cost a whole lot of money, especially if you need them at 2am. Right. You, you know, cause they know you're going to pay it. 
if you got a, a pool of stuff in your floor <laughs> <laughs> and, and it ain't stopped coming yet, <laughs> just give me your wallet <laughs> pretty right. much. But, right. you know, but the thing is that it's not just about for some of these women, it's not just about how much money he makes. It's how does everybody else view him? Right. You know, is 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 he balling? You know, does he does he look good? Does his position, does his title look good to everyone else? Because if that weren't the case, then y'all would be snatching up some of these men who who own these businesses and these companies that aren't high profile, that you know don't look um, you know extravagant and and elegant. But they're making great money. They're they're hardworking men. They, um, you know, obviously are are intelligent. They know how to build a business. They know how to budget. They know how to be a boss. They know how to manage people. And, you know, sometimes they're just, just, you know, everyday men, but y'all don't want that. Y'all want these quotes, high value men, and you don't even really know what that means, but you really want men that are in a spotlight because you want to be seen and you want to be seen by them. Mm -hmm. And that's, what's important. It's not even, I don't even know if it's really important to them. Uh, what they want. I don't know if they know what they want. They know they want to be seen. They need mm-hmm. their approval of people around them. Yep. Right. But everybody is pretending. That's the thing. Everybody's pretending. You have mm-hmm. some of these women, I'm not going to say all, but some of these women that are plastered in, in, in makeup, in wigs, weave, eyelashes mm-hmm. from head to toe. I look, you can play Miss Potato Head at this point. I don't know what's <laughs> real and what's not. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. And you're yeah. looking for, for this man who has all of these exterior things. You're talking about his bank account. You're talking about his title and all these things. And you don't, you're not interested in the real him. So there's right. a fake you mm. looking for a possibly fake somebody else. Mm. You better preach. What are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? I'm going to say this. Y'all better get y'all a man who has a a good job, making enough money to take care of his home, take care of himself, you and your children, who has a good heart, who is hardworking, who is intelligent, who is industrious, who is creative. Because if he is all those things, he's going to always find a way to make some money, no matter what, and take care of you. Find a man who is respectful to you and who's respectful to people in general. Yep. Right. When you go on a first date with this man, don't worry about whether he brought you flowers or not. Don't worry about whether his his uh he's wearing brown shoes with a black belt. Right. This was one excuse I heard in something I watched where she couldn't go out with this guy again because he wore brown <laughs> shoes with a black belt. He should have took that belt off and, and whooped you. But- <laughs> Yeah, no, I don't mean that. I'm just saying. (laughs) But this is my opinion on this. When you go out with a man on a first date, one very important thing to look for is how does he speak to and treat the wait staff? Mm -hmm. That's going to tell you a lot that you need Mm -hmm. to know about this man. Because wait staff is a very easy target. For someone who just likes to talk down to and mistreat someone else and feels like they need to talk down and mistreat someone. If they are respectful, if they use their manners and address them nicely, that's a great sign. Yes, it is. Uh, And I will say, uh, just to to give my boo thing a a shout out, you know, going along with that. So on our first date, we went on this, you know, boat ride that like kind of gave you uh, some history on the city. Mm -hmm. And then we had, um, I wouldn't say a picnic at the park, but we, you know, sat on a blanket at the park and then we went out to eat. Mm -hmm. So before we went to eat, when we were at the park, um, you know, we were sitting, there was like a little duck pond. And so we're sitting there and we're just talking. And it was an elderly couple uh, that pulled up and the, the husband was in a wheelchair. Mm. And so there was like a little grassy area between the curb and 
the sidewalk Mm -hmm. for them to be able to sit like at the park bench, you know, Mm -hmm. at the, at the pond. And she was trying to push him, but she didn't have enough strength Mm -hmm. to push him through the grassy area. And so, um, my husband, well, you know, not even boyfriend at the time, first date, he goes over, he runs over there and pushes the man through the grass so that they could sit there together and Mm. um, at the pond. And in that, in that moment, I was like, this is going to be my husband right here. (laughs) Because it was like, you know, we're, we were in a a deep conversation. The vibe was going well, all of that stuff. And he was willing to stop that, to take care of someone else so that they could be able to have a, a a moment, a memory as well. You know what I'm saying? And so like you said, whether it's, you know, the wait staff, just look at the thoughtfulness Mm -hmm. because those types of things is what's going to carry on in in your relationship. When you're talking about having children, you know, managing a household, you need to be with someone who can do more than just throw a check at something. They have to be able to have a level of understanding, compassion, empathy, wisdom, you know, any, any bozo could win the lotto and have a lot of money. Yep. That has nothing to do with morals or integrity. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you so worried about how much money he's making. Well, if you haven't looked at his, his heart or his intentions, how, you know, he don't want to share that money with you. True story, true story. Or, you know what? And here, here's another thing. The, whatever, whatever bait that you use to catch somebody is the bait that you have to use in order to keep them. So if you're saying to yourself that you're the type of fish that needs finances, you know what I mean? That's, 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 that's the only bait that you'll eat is finances. Then you're also recognizing that you have a price. Okay. Mm. So if you're for sale, if you're for sale, then that means that there's certain things that you're you're reducing your negotiating power within mm-hmm. a relationship because you've become merchandise, right? Mm-hmm. Merchandise yeah. doesn't get to decide its value. The consumer gets to decide its value. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying. Somebody gonna get mad. Somebody is. <laughs> Somebody is doing it to that keyboard right now. <laughs> indeed, indeed. But it's indeed. it's it's all true. You know, it's all true. And you know, I just I really want to see our sisters step back. Seriously, step back for a moment and take another look at our men, mm-hmm. right? And see them for who and what they are. Mm-hmm. Put aside your individual, um, you know, put aside your, your individual experiences and things that went wrong with, with individual men. Mm-hmm. We all go through stuff, you know, where we get mistreated or we allow ourselves to be mistreated, whatever it may be. Right. But we can't, We can't paint, you know, a whole group of men according to, you know, one or two relationships that have happened. And if it's three, four, five, then I'm sorry, ma'am, you're, you're the common denominator. You need to regroup with yourself. That's real. It's not them. them. If you're coming out saying where every man I dated, push pause right there. Right. That's a you problem. Yeah. Yeah. Where are you finding these men? Yep. Why are see, all these men attracted to you? Right. <laughs> but see, if that requires self-awareness, self-reflection, and accountability. And that that those are things that generally speaking, black women don't want to have any parts of. They want to be able to um, make someone else responsible for the negative outcomes in their life all while taking full responsibility for the things that are great in their life, (laughs) you know? Hmm. So I'm I'm telling you, 
self-accountability and self-awareness are honestly very powerful things. Mm-hmm. You know, it can, it can be, you know, of course, painful and quite uncomfortable when you have to look at you and take responsibility for some crazy things that you, you've done, some situations that you've been in and be like, you know what, that was kind of my fault that I stayed there. Once I recognized who this yep. man was and what was going on, I stayed because he was mm-hmm. fine. Yeah. Because the sex was good. Mm-hmm. Well, then when it all falls apart, take responsibility for that. You exactly. knew he was no good a long time ago. That's real. That's real. And I think that most women have had that experience. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? If once you are of a particular age where you have had, you know, some relationship experience, you have been with a guy who you knew that there were red flags popping up all over the place, but you wanted this person for whatever reason. And so you, the, the line of acceptability got further and further away because mm-hmm. this was the person that you wanted. Right. Well, in, in that same way that you allowed that to be acceptable, you have to own that. And in owning that, that gives you power in your decision-making for the next relationship. You know, and it shouldn't be like and and no one is saying to go out here and, you know, find some guy who doesn't want to work, you know, doesn't have any ambition or anything like that. That's that's not what anybody is saying. The the leading criteria for a partner should not be income. Absolutely. You know, as, as we've seen just in this last year with everything that happened with covid people's finances can be turned on their head in a matter of months. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? There are people who were doing very well, successful, had businesses, all of that, and everything was destroyed as a result of COVID. Yeah. So you go and you find this guy who has all of these things and another pandemic comes through and he's a complete jerk. So mm-hmm. now you're connected to a jerk who's <laughs> broke. A broke jerk. Right. So, you know, he's going to be attitudinal because he's lost everything. (laughs) And who do you think that that who you think is going to get the brunt of all of that? But Mm -hmm. that's what you focused on. That was what the priority. And and like you said, it's such a small percentage of men. So all of these women are going after this small group of men and they have an expectation that they're the ones that are going to be chosen. Right. You know, and I know that you're cute and all of that kind of stuff, you know, whatever. But you have you have no control whatsoever on whether a man chooses you. You can put whatever it is that you want to put out there to try to make yourself as attractive as possible to a person, but they have control on whether of whether they will you know pursue you or not. Especially when you're talking about in terms of marriage, mm-hmm. you know, um, the man has control of that. You know, yeah. he has he has control o- over that, which to me he should, because when in the in the cases of divorces, separations, all of this stuff, we all know. And we've had this discussion before that the law typically sides with the woman. The right. woman is usually the one that has the the power over as far as the children, mm-hmm. um, you know, the the income, whether it's divided or, you know, she gets a portion to sustain her and the child, all of that kind of stuff. The, the man is usually on the short end of the stick. And so with that being said, he's going, it, it, it would behoove him <laughs> <laughs> to make that decision wisely, you know? Yeah. And so why would he, why would he, first of all, be with someone who puts so much emphasis on money because that puts him under more strain, stress and strain when that is the, um, the standard, you know, to, to, to be at this particular level, you know, and, and just like we said, you know, the whole decision-making the whole, you know, how is this woman going to mother children? If the criteria is income for a husband, for a mate, you know, it's all, it's all tied together. It's all tied together. It's all tied together. And, you know, we've, we've been talking about it without calling it what it is, but, you know, this whole con we've talked about the high value man, right. And then, then the whole thing of dating down again, we, we've touched on it. 
-hmm. we have to, it, to me, it's a matter of changing your mind when you're talking about dating down, because for some women, you know, they consider dating down to be dating a man who makes less than they do. Right. But mm -hmm. it's, it's not rational because now we know that black women, um, you know, are at a higher level in terms of the money that we make. You know, we have gotten access to higher education and we're getting access to higher paying, higher level jobs. Black men are not doing the same at the same rate that we are. So how do we expect to get to this level? And with all of the challenges, all of the many, many challenges that our black men have, we expect them not to meet us there, <laughs> but to exceed us magically. Right. Where did you get it? How, how, how ma'am? Make it make sense. It doesn't. It doesn't. Right. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. And it's irrational yeah. and it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. It's ridiculous. It's, we are, have joined in with everyone else that is belittling and devaluing our men. Yeah. When we should be the ones, when no one else is, we should be the ones encouraging them, uplifting them, and yes. joining together with yes. them. And we're not. We're telling them that they have to compete with us to be with us. Right. That's real. That's real. And it's to everyone's detriment. Theirs, mm -hmm. ours, and whatever children that we produce. Our community, our future, mm -hmm. everything everything so if black lives matter mm. it's not just about police and and the injustice that comes from police but if black lives matter that means that we are for the preservation of black life we are for sustaining black life we are for improving black life we are for maximizing the potential of black life Right. So then we should be about black family. Boom. Right. Because we, we know and understand that children fare fare better in a two in a two parent home. Yeah. So you should value marriage. You should value the the traditions that kept us strong and intact through slavery. Like, I mean, and when you really, when you really think about it, because we were able to maintain marriages and families through all of this hardship, through slavery, through Jim Crow, through, through all of this, we were able to maintain family because men and women understood their position and the importance of that dynamic. Absolutely. Now everything is all jacked up and we are so lost yeah and our children are a direct reflection of how lost we are yeah yeah um did you get a chance to watch that video or part of that video <laughs> that listen i got through about six minutes yeah and 30 some odd seconds yes. and i was ready to tear my flesh <laughs> from the bone. Yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't yeah. do it. So <laughs> there was this video. I can't remember both of the young men's names, but one young man was one of um, Puff Daddy's sons. And they have some sort of show, I believe it took place in Miami. Mm -hmm. And where I guess, I guess, I had never seen it before. I guess they would have different celebrities personalities or what have you on the show and just talk about whatever but they had these two young ladies on um they call them <laughs> they call themselves the city girls um I, they're musicians and whatever else they are i did see a video that nerds show <laughs> That nurse so showed me before the video and I just kind of sat there with my mouth open like an idiot. Um, so they're, they're conducting, what's, what's crazy is they're conducting the show like it's a serious talk show. You know, right. like they're having this 
serious conversation and asking real questions and (laughs) real information. And I'm just like, yeah. And the whole conversation is about money. And um, what's the most money that your man spent on you and um, how much money did he spend on you on the first date? Well, how do you tell a man that really has money and a man is just fronting that he has money. Yeah. Oh, well, you know, I don't know. You really can't tell. Oh my God. It's like that. Y'all got it bad. You can't even tell when a man really has money when he don't, you know, just to let y'all know, I don't condone when you go out here and pretend you don't have money. <laughs> Yeah, I was just like, so one of the ladies said that, uh, I guess the person that she's with now for their first date, (laughs) he bought her $50,000 worth of furniture. And I'm just like, little girl, little girl. Did he go, did he go withdraw that from his, from his uh, bank account? (laughs) I'm just like, okay. So, you know, it could be several, it could be several things, you know, maybe, maybe she is being honest and he did get her furniture. Maybe, you know, it was from rent center I, I don't really know. I don't, I don't know what the ins and outs of it are, but I think that the messaging mm-hmm. is horrible. Absolutely. It's horrible because you're creating this unrealistic expectation for these young girls yeah. who are looking at you and whoa they're trying to emulate you and your lifestyle yeah and so they're thinking that now because this city girl had you know furniture given to her well now that's that's the bar for me right and so if you can't provide these things then I'm not talking to you well you're setting yourself up to be alone definitely not have a husband you might be a baby mama to a couple of people but that's the extent of it because it's an unrealistic expectation and then the pressure on the young men because if if they believe that the only way that they're going to have access to sex is through a certain accumulation of wealth Mm -hmm. but they may not have the skill set you know what I mean or the resources Mm -hmm. to acquire that wealth then what's going to happen what are they going to do you know, it's, it's so, it's just so ridiculous to me. Yeah. What, what happened to real interaction? What happened to actual dating where you have conversations and get to know one another and talk about real things versus you're walking in the door trying to figure out if this man makes quote enough money. And then you want to get upset because, you know, he's looking you up and down as if he wants to go to bed with you. Well, you just presented yourself as a prostitute. Thank you. Questioning him about money and can he buy you this and can he. So what we doing? What what kind of exchange we doing? Uh, What we doing? You can't have it both ways. You can't have it both ways. Well, I mean, you hit that. Way. You hit the nail on the head because if money, money, if money controls his access to sex, that is a that is a prostitute. That is a that is a transaction that sounds pretty prostitutional to me. I mean, <laughs> you didn't saying. say money controls his access to you. Period. That's still right. a business transaction. At, at, it is at the least. So, can we stop having business transactions? Mm. And can we get back to having interactions? Mm. Can we, can we, I mean, please, can we start looking at each other again as human beings and as, and can we start respecting our black men so that they can get back to respecting us? Because that's Mm. the other conversation. Mm -hmm. That's the other conversation. I would love to be a fly on the wall to hear conversations that black men are having in private about us. Mm. Some of them have said things here and there online, but for the most part, I'm sure they're, they're very leery about it because they get jumped on. You know, it's okay for us to go online and call them garbage all day. 
Right. But let them come out and say what they really think about us, and it's a mm. problem. It's real. You know, we we need to get back. I'm sorry. We need to get back to, you know, that place where you just go out on a date. And you just interact with each other, you have conversations, you get to know each other, you know, and and go from there versus it just being this, I don't know, this exchange and and a contest. Like, why are we competing with each other? Why are we, or not even each other, I'm sorry, why are we uh, requiring men to compete with us? Right you know, fi- financially, it's not supposed to be a competition. If you're so good by yourself and if you can afford all this by yourself, then do it. Right. Then, then do true. it. Yep. That's the truth. I mean, for that, for all of that, find a gigolo uh, <laughs> that you can call up to, to service your needs and then they can go on about their business and you can continue uh, rolling around in your money like Scrooge McDuck. (laughs) But see, that's where, exactly. But see, that's where the confusion comes is because it's a whole mishmash. I think women are just really confused because the thing is, I think traditionally, when you have a good man, when you have found you a good man and he has found you, you do take pride in who he is and what he is. You know, you will take pride when you've been with this man and he's made all this accomplishments with you by his side. You take pride in the fact that, you know, we he and I have worked hard together. And now he runs this company. He owns this company. He has his own business. He's accomplished that and the third that y'all have accomplished together. You know, you you've, you know, gotten married to this man because he fell in love with your intellect and, and this, that and the third. You fell in love with his drive and this. You know, so there's this pride. So I think women have gotten it twisted in saying, well, I want this man already made, already put together, already at the top at the age of, I don't know, 27. (laughs) You know, so that I can brag about the man I got. Right. You've skipped over all the work, ma'am. And you're trying to require him to have all of these accomplishments at 27 that a lot of men don't get till 50. Right. You're make it make sense it doesn't I can't I'm sorry (laughs) (laughs) you sound like the lady at DMV I'm sorry (laughs) you don't don't have the right you don't have all your paperwork man you're going to have to schedule another appointment well you know I know that you've waited in in line for hours but I'm sorry you're going to have to make another appointment ma'am there's nothing I can do I can't help you <laughs> D25. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I really am, you know, I said this, you know, laughing at the beginning, but I really am interested to to read people's comments. Um, because I do want to have this conversation and this interaction. I want to understand where women are coming from um well I was going to say young women but like you said they they not all that young right so just women in general I mean let's just have this this conversation because I really 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 want to try and understand have a conversation and get you all to understand where we're coming from this right. you know we're we're laughing and we're joking because I'm sorry it's just really ridiculous but this yeah. isn't just about you know laughing and joking and making fun this is honestly a serious thing we're not in a position as as black people to play these games you know in in terms of our future and our families yeah. we're not in a position to do that and I, you know I, I love my black men too much to just sit by and just say nothing and right. we should love ourselves more than this we we love ourselves enough to go to school and become more educated and to work mm-hmm. hard and get these you know higher paying higher level jobs but we don't yes. love ourselves enough to present ourselves in a way that's respectful and classy and to say you know what i just want a good man right what we'll do is oh how can i put this we will present ourselves 
in, in a way that we are for sale mm -hmm. to find this quote high value man mm -hmm. you know and not really bring anything other than <laughs> you know our bodies to mm -hmm. the table even when we have more to offer that's the thing even when we have more to offer we have education we have intellect we have all these things to offer but we want to want that to be presented mm -hmm. because like well that's what will get him well honey it's not about what will get him it's about what you want to present right what do you want the bait to be because how whatever do, the bait is, that's what you got to you, you got to keep serving. Whatever yeah. whatever the bait is, you got to keep serving it. How do you want to be seen? Mm -hmm. Who are you really? If this isn't you, then why are you presenting it? Because it's got to be hard work to not be you every day. Yes, it's real. I, I remember when I was was younger. I, huh, you would not catch me not wearing makeup going out of the house because mm -hmm. I was too self-conscious about myself at that time. And I caked mm -hmm. on the makeup. I did. And it was, you know, thinking back, that was just a terrible place to be in because I had, I had to, for I had to present myself that way all the time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it was, I can only imagine from someone else's perspective, I had to always seem self-conscious uncomfortable you know unsure because I was mm -hmm. I was mm -hmm. I I had to grow into myself and and get that confidence and so when you present yourself in that way all the time you know not to say that you should just walk around just undone I'm not saying that but there's a right. difference between um you know needing to be just over the top you know all the time there's a big, big difference between that and just not taking care of yourself. There's, there's a medium and right. you have to be you, you, you have mm -hmm. to be you. And it's like, I think for a lot of these women, first of all, you don't know who you are and what you want. Not really. Yeah. Not really. You don't know your own value. Not really. No, I'm not talking right. about how much you make. Right. That's real. That's real. And so then they can, they can cling on to the status of the man and that becomes their worth absolutely bam yeah bam yeah and that's mm. a horrible place to be in because what yeah. happens when he's gone or if or if he's gone you start all over again yeah or the money is gone or the position is gone yeah you know he he made he may have you know made all of this money in corporate America and then one day realized this is not fulfilling to me. And, you know, now I want to do whatever, whatever. And that particular thing might not necessarily be as lucrative as corporate America, or there may be some time where he has to pour into that to build it into something for it to be lucrative. You know, right. are, are you going to be willing to be supportive of that? Are you going to encourage and, and help support his vision? You know, if it's not if it's not bringing in money, you know, are, are you going to have a problem with him stepping down from being a CEO or a president of a company to being a I don't know, uh, uh, an artist, right? you know, a no, a no name artist. Are, are, are you willing to do that? And he's, you know, trying to sell his paintings online, but he doesn't have CEO or president next to his name. You gonna be okay with that? Cause see, now you're attached to the artist, right? You know, not the CEO formerly known as president. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, what do you? Where does that go? Because the the same thing that makes you, you know, hold your shoulders, you know, broad at the idea that he's a CEO, it's going to do something to your shoulders when he's doing something that you don't necessarily respect. Right. So. And then, and then these women say they want love. Well, ma'am, love does not fit into what you're talking about and what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Once he realizes that you're here for his wallet and bank account, 
where does love fit in in that? Because see, you can have love and get the bank account later. Yeah. Very seldom does the bank account come first Mm -hmm. and love blossoms. That's true. Or the bank account might not ever come. It might just be an average person making an average salary, having an average life. And that's just what it is. Yep. And and at what point did that become so horrible? Thank you. You know what I mean? Because it was good for our grandmothers. Thank because I was going to say, if if you think it's so horrible and want to turn your nose up, that's an insult to to our fathers, mm-hmm. to our grandfathers, mm-hmm. to our uncles. Yep. A whole slew of people. And I'm sorry, I respect highly the hard work that my father, my grandfathers, my uncles have done. They have all been hard working men that have made good lives for their families. Mm-hmm. And I respect them to the utmost. That's real. That's real. <sighs> <sighs> I like how we been. <laughs> <laughs> we had that collective sigh it's so exhausting it's it really is and you know I I worry because you know I have all boys mm-hmm. you know what I mean and and they have to they have to find wives amongst all of this foolishness they have to find wives amongst all of this foolishness you know it's it's <sighs> you may need to help them travel abroad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's real because uh, you know these women are wanting these men to you know make six figures to be able to sustain the house and you know take care of the majority of the bills and all of this kind of stuff and they can't even heat up a hot pocket. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. Hot pocket going to turn into a burnt bun. (laughs) I'm just saying. Yeah. You know, I don't want my, you know, my children having wives and then coming here because they malnourished and they need a meal. You know? And here she come trotting behind. (laughs) Like, oh, you got to stay on the porch. <sighs> well, shoot, for meal. real, for real, he gonna have to stay on the porch too because he ain't do his due diligence. Okay, you know, forever is a long time to not come home to a hot meal. Is all I'm saying. <laughs> I'm gonna let you say, stand on the porch and and smell the meal on my breath to give you some <laughs> some drive. <laughs> <laughs> give you a little push. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay. So yes. y'all, please once again, I'm looking forward to to your comments. You know, this is a this is a conversation, you know, to be to be had. We want to know your your thoughts, your ideas, your opinions, um, your position, you know, all of those things. Um, so uh you can reach us on my perspective at gmail.com if you want to send us an email that's m-y-p-h-e-r-s-p-e-c-t-i-v-e at gmail.com uh you can find our many many videos on youtube on that nerd soul and we actually want to thank nerd soul as always for allowing us to be on his platform once again that is youtube that nerd soul and you can check out um his merchandise on shop that nerd And going back to YouTube, there are a variety of videos to look at um, from Nerd Soul. And also, all of our videos, our Black Together Walk in Our Shoes videos, if you wanted to go back and watch what we've done in the past, we have a lot of videos um, to choose from. And please, comment, like, subscribe, and share. Most of all, continue the conversation. Continue the conversation. So as always, thank you all for listening. Thank you all for checking us out. And bye, y'all. Peace, love, and light, everybody.